Coming up on Global Business, Chinese President Xi Jinping has met with U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and his delegation in Beijing. We check out major Belt and Road projects. Our reporter travels to Thailand to learn about a local railway enthusiast love of China's made, China-made trains. And it's 2023 World Oil Mark Outlook. OPEC is upbeat on global oil demand in the mid to long term despite world emission commitments. From CGTN headquarters here in Beijing, this is Global Business. I'm Zheng Junfeng. Chinese President Xi Jinping has met with U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and his delegation in Beijing. Xi Jinping said the relationship between China and the U.S. is the most important one in the world, and how the two countries get along with each other will determine the future of mankind. He said China and the U.S. must demonstrate the broad-mindedness, vision and responsibility as two major countries and enhance the well-being of the two peoples and promote so societal progress. He said the world is developing and times are changing, but the historical logic of peaceful coexistence between China and the U.S. has not changed. Noting that the economies of China and the U.S. are deeply integrated and can benefit from each other's development, she proposed that the two countries should respect each other and pursue win-win cooperation in a bit to stabilize, improve relations and find the right way to get along. Chuck Schumer said China's development and prosperity benefited American people. Noting that the U.S. does not see conflicts and decoupling with China, Schumer said the U.S. is looking forward to strengthening bilateral trade and investment cooperation with China. For more discussion on China-U.S. ties, we're joined up by our friend uh, Liu Baocheng, Dean of Center for International Business Economics at the University of International Business and Economics. Thanks for joining us, Professor Liu. Uh, since June this year, a number of U.S. officials have visited China, but U.S. restrictions on Chinese companies such as Huawei continue, as does its small yard high fence policy. What's the reason for this stance? Well. Uh, yes, we do know this a stream of uh, U.S. dignitaries have visited China, and uh, it shows a very much of divide actually within the U.S. Uh, political circle where uh, they uh, still wanted to engage with China given the importance uh, China plays in economic and geopolitical issues uh, in the uh, uh, globe. And uh, on the other hand, they wanted really to be more, uh, quote unquote, politically correct by taking a tougher stance against China. So therefore, it is for them to really to uh, streamline their way of understanding into uh, the role China really plays uh, both bilaterally and multilaterally. And uh, I think this is really uh, uh, important for uh, both sides really to meet each other, to uh, find ways uh, to build a better understanding and to remove some of the cognitive biases. And because, uh, you know, the previous uh, three major heavyweight guys were uh, all from the administration, and uh, now uh, the lawmakers are really the first time uh, after the pandemic to visit China. I think uh, it is really the eye-opening uh, process for uh, all of them. And then they see, you know, what is really uh, China's stance and what is the level of Chinese development and how China can really contribute peacefully to the uh, global community, which is really a, fan uh, a fancified concern uh, from the U.S. Uh, lawmakers at large. Mm. Because we see that after the pandemic, the world economy has been recovering very modestly or very weak uh, this year so far. How can China and the U.S. work together to boost global economic recovery? Well, the entire uh, global economy is still in a rehabilitatory mode, and plus the uh, the United Nations ha has also raised concern uh, whether we are uh, how much uh, we're going to meet the sustainable development goals set forth by the global community. So therefore, uh, it is really a, a right call for the responsibility of uh, leadership on both sides because they are the most heavyweight. Uh, the uh, economies and also they play the leadership role in the uh, uh, global community and so therefore 
uh, to build a better understanding and enhance the trust, and also, uh, as uh, President Xi mentioned, to show the mutual respect. Uh, uh, that's the only way for win-win uh, cooperation on both sides. But however, we do see that uh, there has been a lot of cooking uh, within, uh, particularly the uh, Congress, that uh, you know China is really posing the threat and China is not playing by the rule. And so now I think you know through uh, uh, the communication, and I hope that uh, they can really uh, build a better understanding of where China is and how they can really engage. And uh, as a matter of fact, both the consumers and businesses uh, on both sides, they really love to have a more of uh, improvement in the bilateral relationship because they are the ones that are hurt uh, for the uh, uh, political rivalries. Mm. Actually, before his visit to Beijing, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer visited Shanghai. Our footage just showed here his visit to Shanghai and met with uh, uh, China's party leader in Shanghai. Schumer praised China's vitality uh, during his visit. Should China invite more U.S. decision makers like Schumer or other politicians or officials to visit China? And would their visit help to change their ideas about China? Well, I think the uh, visitation should be a uh, uh, two-way traffic. And it's not only the uh, China side who are there to invite the U.S. politicians and lawmakers, but also the U.S. should also invite more of the, uh, not only the uh, lawmakers and politicians, but, uh, you know, also uh, scholars, business people. And that's the way that uh, people really enhance the trust. Uh, as a matter of fact, over the past uh, decades, we do see that through the enhanced exchange of people at uh, uh, many different levels and also on multiple fronts, uh, that's there to uh, enhance the trust and build understanding and also to find ways for further collaboration because this is also part of the agenda for the uh, Schumer's delegation that uh, they also seek ways that uh, uh, whether the, these countries can really enhance their cooperation in a, a multiple areas uh, where the, it's, not on, uh, it's not only there to benefit the both uh, peoples of the countries, and it's also benefit the world because the world has already too much trouble. And now it is really uh, calling for the understanding, courage, and wisdom of uh, uh, leadership so that uh, we come to really uh, in line on many of those areas because uh, the misunderstanding and uh, the bias are really in a way for the reality. Thank you so much. Uh, very interesting ideas uh, from Professor Liu Baocheng, Dean of Center for International Business Ethics at the University of International Business and Economics here in Beijing. China's retail and logistics sectors maintained strong momentum in September as supportive policies took effect. The China General Chamber of Commerce said its Retail Prosperity Index, a barometer of retailers' expectations, surged to a 12-month high at 51.3 percent in October. Retail firms generally expect sales to be robust in October on back the past eight-day holiday and supportive government measures. In the meantime, the Logistics Prosperity Index, compelled by China's Federation of Logistics and Purchasing, climbed to 53.5 percent in September, up more than 3 percent from August. The Federation said the government's supportive measures had released consumption potential and subsequently driven the logistics demand. Now, some key gauges of the Chinese economy will be released in the coming days. China's central bank will soon release September data for monetary supply new yuan loans and social financing. China's inflation data, namely CPI and PPI, and import and export figures will also be released this Friday. And China's GDP figures for the third quarter will be released next Wednesday. During the day, the State Council Information Office will hold a press briefing about the third quarter national economic performance, which will also include details of retail sales and industrial added value in September. Now, the first express freight train to take goods directly from Shanghai to Munich in Germany was launched by China Europe Express Railways on Monday. 
carrying over 27 million US dollars worth of goods, the Shanghai train will travel through six countries to reach Munich in 17 days. The express train takes only one third of the time, sending goods mainly by ship from Shanghai to Munich. Since it began operations two years ago, the China Europe train has transported over $6 billion worth of goods between Asia and Europe. We launched the direct trains to Munich to meet the needs of European clients. It has significant time and cost advantages over land transportation through Hamburg and Duisburg. Munich is an industrial city, so the shipment is seven assembly lines with new generation mechanical information equipment integrated, which is beneficial for the development of local enterprises. China Europe Express is an extension of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Shanghai Customs has opened a dedicated window for the China Europe train, providing electronic documents and financial services. This is a result of the China International Import Expo and will better support the national development of the Belt and Road Initiative. As the production base in the Yangtze River Delta, Shanghai can play a better role in the Belt and Road Initiative. Financially speaking, we provide a comprehensive ecosystem of services for the China Europe Express. By connecting with the enterprise operation system, we can quickly deal with payment, financing and other needs. Moreover, the authenticity of trade can be verified through system data interaction, laying the foundation for subsequent financial regulation. As the latest automobile manufacturing country in Southeast Asia, Thailand has over 60 years of vehicle assembly and manufacturing experience. Thailand is now seeking cooperative opportunities with China for development in the EV sector. Being one of the earliest car, Chinese car company to successfully enter into Thai market this year, Saik Motor CP celebrates its 10-year anniversary. Our reporter Ho Jing talks to the vice president of Saik Motor CP for more details in this bilateral cooperation of the past decades. Take a listen. We start with a joint venture mm -hmm. instead of use uh, by our own because we don't know exactly what it is. I think the Thai market somehow has so many complex. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, the market environment, the government issue. I think several things for the uh, our company is take to deeply understand. Mm -hmm. uh, CP Group is, is one of the biggest companies in Thailand, mm. but uh, never do the kind of business of the automotive industrial in Thailand. Mm. I think, but this is a uh, have a good relation long time together with Sex Motor in, uh, in business in, in China. Mm -hmm. That's why we come with the manufacturing and sale office in mm. Thailand so as a beginning, not just come with only the sales part. Besides car manufacturing, I know SEC Motor and CP is also establishing an ecosystem of EV cars. Uh, could you brief with us what does this ecosystem mean here? Fortunately, we have some certain uh, dealer network mm -hmm. throughout the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more than uh, 120 at that moment, 120 uh, showroom outlets mm -hmm. throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. And then we decide to start the DC chart mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. to the our network, mm -hmm. and we partnership with the uh, gas station. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest one is uh, we call the Bangja, mm -hmm. Bangja uh, gas station. We decide to ha I mean a joint set up the uh, DC chart mm -hmm. in the gas station, some mm -hmm. gas station mm -hmm. in Greater Bangkok area. Mm -hmm. This is make the uh, our infrastructure mm -hmm. quite. Uh, how is it? Enough for the customer who purchase our car feel comfortable mm. to drive the car to uh, means uh, to the up country, mm. to the countryside or whatever. I know the government has already issued some policies to uh, the development of EV cars uh, like the 3030 and the EV 3.0. Could you brief uh, these two to us? We don't want to be like a be the the last location to produce ICE mm. in Thailand. Mm. That's why the government set up the 3030. This is a policy that in 30 year 2000, 2030, our share or the volume of the EV is supposed to be 30%. Mm. This is a target mm. of the 3030. 
two plus two. Two is mean uh, around the OEM to import with some certain subsidy, and then another two to produce the car as the same volume mm -hmm. as a uh, import mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. or volume mm -hmm. at that uh, two years and two years. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, key of this scheme. To subsidy the, from the excise tax reduce from 8% to 2%. Mm -hmm. This is a one, mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, subsidy for the MSRP means the price of the EV less than Reduce 150,000 baht mm. for the price less than 2 million baht. You're watching Global Business. Come up next. In its 2023 World Oil Outlook, OPEC is upbeat on global oil demand in a mid to long term despite world emission commitments. We're stepping out of the studio to take you on a brand new journey along the Belt and Road. With a mission to record how the initiative has changed lives and livelihoods. We travel to over 20 countries. We document not only infrastructure among the Belt and Road countries, but also cultural links that bound the community with a shared future. Stories of how they promote growth and improve lives. We invite you only on our special series of the New Silk Road. This year marks the 10th anniversary of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Xi Jinping has cooperated with China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation to launch an integrated media report called Rails of Progress, focusing on the transportation infrastructure projects of BRI countries. Xi Jinping takes you to see how the high-end locomotives, equipment and supporting devices served in China have helped local economic development. Our reporting team goes to countries jointly build the Belt and Road to experience the local economic and cultural characteristics. In the first episode, Sudetian's Yu Yang dwells into the impressive journey of Thailand, highlighting local people's love for trains made in China. We meet Paul Piasek during Thailand's raining season, but spending a day with him shows that when one has a deep passion for something, Every day can be great. What are you doing here? Playing Winterland. Why? Because I like it. This one? No, that one! Paul is referring to a locomotive made by Chinese company CRRC. With its unique red and silver red paint, the vehicle has earned the nickname Ultraman, inspired by the Japanese superhero. But it's also regarded as a superhero on Thailand's railways reaching speeds up to 120 km per hour and connecting distant destinations like Chiang Mai in the north, Nong Khai in the northeast and Suna Golok in the south. And that's why Paul insists we take the ride and experience the speed of Ultraman. The busy carriages tell a story, as trains play a very important role in the daily lives of Thai people, providing a comfortable, safe, affordable and environmentally friendly mode of transportation. There are currently a total of 50 so-called Ultraman speeding on the railways of Thailand. They carry both cargo and passengers on long-distance routes. 
On the train, we also meet one of the representatives of the manufacturer, Mr. Chen Zhijie, deputy manager of the local motor manufacturing center at CRRC Tishu Yan Company. Uh 那我想请教您这咱们泰国的铁路线都是怎么样设计的a wide range of uses brings a great deal of popularity. In Thailand, the locomotives and trains made by CRRC have attracted their own fans. Napa Kuhabwanya is one of them. At this is Asia Pacific Rail 2023 held in Bangkok. Napa said he hoped to turn the trains from a means of transportation for the general public into a cultural element that can gradually penetrate into people's lives. How did you become a fan of trains? Uh, I loved the train when I was young. And when I grow up, I hear the sound of the locomotives. There are different sounds on the different trains. Some of the trains, like the steam locomotive, they have the great sound. When when the sound is ring, uh, it feels like the locomotive is calling me to be with them, wow. not to leave them alone. Gotcha. And I even see you have some tickets uh -huh. with you. What yeah. is it? Oh, this is the old, the old tickets from the state area of Thailand. Oh, the old tickets. How old is it? Uh, more than 30 years old. More than 30 years old. Yeah. Is the first train or the... It is not the first train but it is the last tickets that we uh, collect and then after the after 30 years we and some of the railway people mm -hmm. they want they want us to expand the railway cultures so these tickets I give to you with Thank the you. both stickers that ah. I especially designed for this day Thank you. Nepal says that in addition to Ultraman, fans have affectionately nicknamed many Chinese-made trains in Thailand. There's Dashumao or Giant Panda, referring to trains made by Chinese companies, and Xiaohuangya or Little Yellow Duck, named after their colors. Behind every name, you can get a sense of that strong passion for trains among these enthusiasts. And beyond local fans, the State Railway of Thailand also speaks highly of its cooperation with the CRRC. Actually, it has been uh, more than 10 years that we first have a uh, freight car from CRRC in together with the passenger car, 115 passenger car from CRRC Changchun, uh, maybe seven or eight years ago. And uh, follow with the uh, CRC Chichuyen, we call that freight is the CSR. We have received locomotive 20 units, which is the highest horsepower in uh, SRT State Railway of Thailand. In addition to electric diesel trains, at the beginning of this year, the first battery powered locomotive manufactured by CRRC was also launched in Bangkok to aid Thailand's efforts to improve its railway services while cutting carbon emissions. The railway network will bring uh, uh, the One Bell, One Lord initiative of uh, President Xi Jinping that will connect the China, Laos, Thailand, and then the whole Southeast Asian country. China and Thailand have been cooperating in various areas of railway development 
The ongoing construction of high-speed rail network is Thailand's biggest scheme and the Belt and Road Initiative, connecting countries across Asia and beyond. Local experts say once Thailand's first high-speed railway is completed, it will not only inject vitality into the economic development of regions along the line, but also boost the regional connectivity. And after spending a day immersed in the world of locomotives made by Chinese enterprises, we have gained a deeper understanding into how such trains are transforming the lives of local people and why they have garnered such immense affection from Thai fans. Paul, did you have a good trip? Definitely. I want to give this to you. Why? I believe this is a favorite toy. Yes, but I don't need it anymore because I'm going to build my own Ultraman together with my Chinese friends. This vision represents the future for the development of Thai Railway, built on cooperation and shared passion. Yu Yang, CGTN, in Bangkok, Thailand. In the next episode of Rails of Progress, we will take you to Indonesia to take a ride on the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail. OPEC is upbeat on global oil demand in the medium and long term, despite zero emission commitments for major economies. In its 2023 World Oil Outlook, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries forecasts oil demand to reach 110 million barrels per day in 2028 and 116 million by 2045. That disagrees with the IEA's projection that world oil demand will peak before 2030. OPEC also pushed back calls to stop investment in oil, new oil projects amid energy transition. He estimate required investment at $14 trillion out to 2045. Al AI uh, Gias, Secretary General of OPEC, rejected net zero policy, saying climate action should not come at the cost of global energy security. The European Central Bank's Vice President, Luis de Guindo said inflation was slowing but also urged caution on Monday. He said the macroeconomic environment is subject to enormous uncertainty, especially the recently oil price moves in the wake of events in the Middle East. Fighting between Israel and Hamas forces in Gaza caused oil prices to rise sharply on Monday, while the Guiz expressed inflation to stay on its downward trend in the coming month. He noted that the pace of price increases is still clearly above the central bank's 2% target. Now, do for this edition of Global Business. I'm Jim Thanks for watching. Sudition continues with more news and views. Stay with us.